Hello and welcome to your lecture on learning outcome 16. We will be concentrating on a perimeter and area. So in this lesson, your objectives are to calculate perimeters and areas of 2D shapes, including triangles and circles and composite shapes, including non-rectangular shapes. And formula will be given uh, for most of them, except for triangles and circles. Now for level one, you just need to concentrate on perimeter and area of 2D shapes, such as triangles and uh, like squares and rectangles. Okay, for level two, you need to make sure you can find the area and perimeter of circles as well. Okay, so you need to make sure you remember the formula for circles. Now then, first of all, the area of a 2D shape or a plane shape is the amount of flat space that it covers. Common units of area are square millimeters, which can be written as millimeters squared, Square centimetres, centimetres squared, and square metres, metres squared. Sorry, this should be a little too, which I'm sure you know. Now, the distance around the outside edge of a shape is called the perimeter. Remember to include the units in your answer. So, for example, if you're given a question and it's written with centimetres, then your answer will be in centimetres. Okay? Um, areas of irregular shapes can be found by counting the square units the shape covers and you'll get some questions like this as like one markers all right okay so remember the distance around the outside edge of a shape is called the perimeter all right and that's what we're going to work on first again remember to include the units so why don't you pause the video and um, have a go at working out the perimeter of this shape Okay, if you've had a go at that, then um, this could come up on a calculator or a non-calculator paper. All right, and uh, if it comes up on the non-calculator paper, remember you're just going to add all the sides together. So 2.7 plus 5.7 plus 4 plus 5. I've put these zeros there just to make sure that I put my numbers in the right place. And then I just add them up. So 7 plus 7 plus 0 plus 0 is 14. So I put my 4 there and I carry the 1, put my decimal point in the same place, and then I add up this column here. 2 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 is 16, plus this one here is 17. So my answer will be 17.4, and it will be in centimetres because it's centimetres in the question. Okay, so perimeter of plane shapes is very easy. Now then... When we're working out any perimeter of plane shapes that don't involve circles, all you're doing is adding up the sides. So that's all we need to know so far about perimeter. Let's have a look at some area questions because that is where people struggle. And then we'll come back to perimeter when we look at circles. Here are some important formula that you need to know for area. Okay, so you need to know the area of a rectangle or a square works the same way. The area of a rectangle is just length times width. We should know this one. All we do is whatever we're given for this length, we multiply by this length. Okay, and our answer is in whatever units squared. You also need to know the area of a parallelogram, which again is similar, but this time it's base times height. Okay, so here's an example base times height. So it's not this length, it's the straight length up here. Okay, the area of a parallelogram is base times height. You also need to know the area of a triangle. The area of a triangle is half the base times the height, or base times height divided by two. It's up to you how you want to remember that. Base times height over two as well. All right. So, there's your triangle and you would do again half the base times the height so you would just do base first times the height and then I would half it okay rather than saying half times base times height all right just helps you to remember and then finally area of a trapezium this one's the trickier one and this is half times the sum of the parallel sides times the height okay but to remember that easier, it's half, half of 
a plus b times the height. Okay, so what I would say is instead, and this is how I write it, is a plus b over 2 times h. Okay, or a plus b times h over 2. It doesn't matter. But basically, you're halving it at the end. Okay, so finding the area of a trapezium isn't too bad. We add these two values, we multiply by the height, and then we half it. Okay, or we add these two values, half it, and then times by the height. Doesn't really matter. So, pause the video then and calculate the area of this football pitch. Okay, if you've done that, all you're going to do, this is a rectangle. So, area equals length times width. So, the area equals 100 times 70. So the area equals 70 and then two extra zeros. So 7,000 yards squared, okay? Or I think you can write it like this, okay? YD rather than writing yards. But you must have the units and these are the units given. And this is to show that it's area, that little two, okay? What about this parallelogram then, if you'd like to pause the video and have a go at that one? Okay, so remember area of a parallelogram is base times height. So that means it's 5 times 8. And that means that it is 40 centimetres squared. 5 times 8 is 40. Our units are centimetres, which you can't forget. And it's squared because it's area. All right. Right then, what about this one? Area of this one. Now, pointing this out quickly, you can either chop this up so you've got a rectangle and a triangle, or you can use it as a trapezium. Either way, it's your choice. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, if you've had a go at that, all I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to draw this out again but I'm going to draw it this way just because for my benefit I like to know that I mean it's dead it doesn't really matter <laughs> but I just like to draw it out this way if I'm going to use the area of a trapezium okay this is a this is b this is your height that's why I've turned it around, because I need to know that this is A, this is B, and this is my height in order to use it. Because the area of a trapezium is A plus B over 2 multiplied by height. Or half times A plus B times H. Okay? Again, it doesn't matter which way around you do that. You just need to make sure you remember one. So if I'm going to work this out as a trapezium using the formula for the area of a trapezium, I'm going to do um, A, which is 4.9, plus B, which is 10.1, okay? And I'm going to divide that by 2, all right? So 4.9 plus 10.1, and then divide by 2, gives me 7.5, okay? So I've done all of this bit here. So what I need to do is times by the height. So 7.5 times by 6.2 gives me 46.5 centimetres squared because it's in centimetres here and I'm working out area. Now another way I could have done that, and this is obviously not a very well drawn trapezium, is I could have split it up into a triangle and a trapezium. Now... The way that I would have done that is that I would have had to work out this measurement here. Okay. I know the height of my triangle because it's 6.2, because it's the same as this height down here. I also know that this length here is 4.9. And this length from the top to the bottom is 10.1. So if I do 10.1 take away 4.9, it gives me 5.2. So now I've got this triangle that's got a base of 5.2 
and a height of 6.2. I've then got this rectangle, this rectangle here, that is 6.2 by 4.9. So if I work out the area of the triangle, if I wanted to do it this way, it's up to you. Remember, that's base times height over 2. Okay, so that's 5.2 times 6.2 divided by 2. Okay, and that's 16.12 centimetres squared. The area of the rectangle is just length times width, which is 6.2 times 4.9. That gives me 30.38. Now I need to add those together because I've not found the entire shape yet. So 30.8 plus 16.12, oops, sorry, 30.38 plus 16.12 gives us, so if I write that down here, 30.38, plus 16.12 gives us 46.5 centimetres squared. It's exactly the same as if I'd done the area of a trapezium. Okay. Now, I think using the area of a trapezium is quicker and more efficient, but if you feel comfortable using, like, splitting the shape up, then that's up to you. Okay, work out the area of this triangle then. Pause the video. You should be able to do this really easily now and press play for the answer. Okay, if you've had a go at that. Now then, um, area of a triangle. Again, I've just done this on the other page, so you should be fine with this. Base times height over two. Remember, it's, this is the height. Okay, sometimes they'll give you this value to trick you, but you don't need it for the area. We need this when we're talking about Pythagoras and maybe trigonometry, but not area and perimeter. So that means that the area then equals the base, which is 8, times by 6, because that's the height, and we divide by 2. 6 eighths are 48, so that's 48 over 2. So that means that A equals 24 metres squared, because... Uh, 48 divided by 2 is 24. Our units are metres and we're doing area, so it's squared. All right. Now, another type of question that you might get is something like this. The area of this triangle is 55 centimetres squared. Calculate its height correct to three significant figures. So pause the video and have a go at this one and then press play and I'll go through it. Okay. So we know that the area is 55 centimetres squared. We know that to find the area of a triangle, we do base times height over 2. The area is 55. The base is 16.9. We don't know the height. And then we have to divide by 2. So what I've done here is I've put in, I've written out my formula, look. And then I've put in the area. I've put in the base. I don't know the height, and I've put in the divide by 2. So now what we've got here is an equation. We've got 55 centimetres squared equals 16.9 times the height divided by 2. Okay? So let me just move these arrows because I feel like they might be a bit confusing. So what we need to do now is we need to rearrange the equation or work backwards in order to work out H. So we've got, on this side, 16.9 times height divided by 2. I need to get rid of this 2 for a start because we're dividing by it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to times by 2 and I'm going to put it up there. Okay. So 55 times 2 is 110. So 110 centimetres equals, sorry, yeah, centimetres equals 16.9 times height okay we're no longer in area because we've not done the whole calculation so we just go to centimeters now so you've got 16.9 times the height gives you h so the last thing that i need to do to work out h is divide by 
okay, divide by 16.9. 110 divided by 16.9 gives me 6.50887574 equals h on its own, okay? So now we know the height, it also asks us to do that within three significant figures. So that will be 6.51 and it's in centimetres to three significant figures. If you're not sure about significant figures, watch the video on that. We're not finding area here, we're finding the height. So we've worked backwards to find the height. Because we're not finding area, we don't write our answer as centimetres squared. Our area was 55. Okay, so just be very careful there. Okay, let's have a look at another one then. Compound shapes and problem solving. The diagram shows the plan of a garden. Lawn seed is sold in 500 gram packets that cover 15 metres squared. A packet of lawn seed costs £6.25. Work out the total cost of the lawn seed needed to cover the garden. Now this question, before I leave you to do it, um, automatically, when we read a question, if we see something like this, that more or less tells us that we're going to have to work out the area of whatever shape we've been given. Okay, it's just a hint that you've got to work out the area. So even if you can't do the rest of the question, at least try and work out the area of the shape, okay? All right, pause the video and have a go at that one then, see if you can work it out, and then press play for the answer. Okay. So first things first, the lawn seed is sold in 500 gram packets, and it covers 15 meters squared. In order to work out how many packets we need, we need to find the area of this shape. Now this time, this is a compound shape, so we are going to have to separate it. And I'm going to chop off that section there. So I'm left with a rectangle that is 8.5 by 9. Okay, because that's this bit here. Okay. Now this 13.5 is the length from there all the way to there. So in order to work out this bit... I need to do 13.5 take away 8.5, okay? Now, just because some people get a bit confused with doing this, but it's because that length entirely measures 13.5, but that from here to here, it only measures 8.5, that's why we need to take that away, and it gives me five meters, okay? So I've now got this triangle as well, that is five meters in length there, okay? And then, just here, this whole length from there to there is nine meters, because that's what it says there. But, <laughs> from there to there, I don't know if you can see that, it's only five, okay? So we do nine take away five, which gives us four meters, for the section at the bottom. So if I just highlight that there, if that's five, then that bit will be four. So that gives us four meters in height for the triangle. Okay, so that means we've got two shapes. We've got a rectangle to find the area of and a triangle to find the area of. So for the rectangle then, we know that all we need to do is base times height, or sorry, shouldn't write it like that really. We should do length times width, okay? So that means we're going to do 8.5 times 9, and that gives us 76.5 uh, metres squared, because we're in metres, remember? And then for the triangle, we're going to do base times height over 2, which gives us 5 times 4, sorry, over 2, 5 times 4 over 2, which is 20 over 2, which is 10 metres squared. We then need to add them both together because we need the area of the whole thing. So 76.5 plus 10 is 86.5 metres squared. Right, we found the area. That's the first section done. Now I'm just going to rub out some of the mess that I've made over here. So I hope you're taking a lot of notes. Okay, because the next thing it says is that the lawn seed is sold in 500 gram packets that covers 15 meters squared. So each packet, one packet, 
equals 15 meters squared. Okay, I've got 86.5 meters squared. So how many packets do I need? I need to do 86.5 divided by 15. Okay, so 86.5 divided by 15 is 5.76666. So I'm going to need to buy six packets. I can't buy seven, I can't buy 5.7 packets. So I'm going to buy six packets. Okay, it then says that a packet of lawn seed costs six pounds twenty-five. So the last thing I need to do is six packets times by six pounds twenty-five. So six times six pounds twenty-five is thirty-seven pounds and fifty pence. And that's the total cost of the lawn. So when you get a question like this, you will need to work out the area. Then we need to work out how many of these go into it. Okay, it might not be packets, it might be something else. All right, and then you work out how much it costs altogether. Okay, I know that was a little bit tricky. Let's have a look at another one like that. The diagram shows the floor plan of a room. The cost of installing underfloor heating is £155 per square metre. Work out the total cost of installing underfloor heating in this room. Okay, pause the video and have a go at that one. This is a trapezium, I'm going to remind you. So have a go at using the actual formula rather than splitting it up into two shapes. Um, it's much better once you practice it. Okay, if you've had a go at that then, the diagram shows the floor plan of a room. The cost of installing underfloor heating is £155 per square metre. This square metre part reminds you that you've got to find the area. Okay, it's the same as like when I told you they probably wrote something like that. Okay, but to work out the total cost of installing the underfloor heating. So let's first of all work out the area of the trapezium. Remember the formula for the area of a trapezium is A plus B over 2 times H or half times A plus B times H. Okay, again, it's up to you how you want to remember it, but this is easier, I think. Let's label our trapezium. This is A on the top, this is B on the bottom, and this is the height on the side. Okay, so area equals A, which is 4, plus B, which is 6, over 2, times by the height, which is 3. Okay. So, 4 plus 6 is 10, okay, so that's 10 over 2 times 3, 10 over 2 is 5, 5 times 3 is 15, so the area is 15 metres squared, that's it, we're done, okay. The next thing we've got to do, well the last thing we've got to do is work out how much it is in total. If I've got 15 metres squared and it's £155 per square metre, I need to do 155 times by 15, okay? Because it's £155 per square metre and I've got 15 square metres. If I wanted to, um, obviously this it's this that's 15 square metres, okay? So for every one metre by one metre square, it costs £155, that's what that means. So if I times that by 15, it gives me £2,325. That's it, you're done. That's all you had to do for that question. Much easier once you uh, get the hang of it, so keep practising those. Let's move on to look at some circles then. You need to be able to understand and use the vocabulary and formula related to circles. All right. So let's just go through a few things. First of all, the circumference of a circle is a distance around the edge. So that white line all the way around that circle is called the circumference. It's also known as the perimeter. So when we're working at the perimeter of normal shapes, it's really easy. But when it comes to circles, we have to do an extra few things. So we'll come back to that in a minute. The diameter of a circle is a straight line that reaches from one side to the other. So you see this line here going through the middle. That is the diameter because it goes from one side to the other and goes through the middle. It must go through the centre. 
I'll call that C. The radius of a circle is the distance from the centre to any point on the circumference. Okay, so any point on the circumference. So this line here, okay, that's a radius. But I could also draw another line from there to there, and that would also be a radius because it's from the centre and it touches the di it touches the um, circumference. I could draw another one to there. That's also a radius. Okay, so think of like the spokes on a tire. Okay, I could draw a line from the center to the outside edge a thousand times and they would all be the same length and they would all be a radius. Okay, I'm going to leave them like that because it's messy. But I just wanted to point that out. Okay, people always think that it's the radius is just in one place. It's not. Okay, so that's your radius. I'm going to input my center c again so you can see that that's the center the tangent is the line that touches the circle only at one point so this is the tangent in theory it's only meant to touch at one point okay an arc is part of the circumference of a circle so if i do this in red this is an arc here okay an arc is created when we have a radius um, and maybe another radius or a diameter. It's it's part of the circumference. It's a smaller section of the circumference than the whole thing. Okay. And a chord is a line joining two points on the circumference that does not pass through the centre. So that's this one here. Okay. It doesn't go through the centre. It just touches the circumference at two places. That is a chord. Okay. So you need to make sure you know those different meanings. You could draw that diagram now. Use some different colours to help you remember. Um, but it's very important to know those. Uh, you'll be asked them in your exam. You might be asked to label a circle or something like that. Right then, formula for the area and the circumference of a circle. We've got two circles here. Okay. First of all, the area of a circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared, so pi times radius squared. Pi r squared. Okay, now, the radius, this, this long line across here, remember, is the diameter. The radius is always in the middle, so half of it, it's always half. So the radius of this circle would be 5 centimetres. Okay, so in a minute we're going to work out the area of that circle. All right, so the area is pi r squared, pi times the radius squared. The circumference of a circle, or the perimeter, can either be calculated as pi times diameter, okay, and in this case the diameter would be 8, because it's only given as a radius on this one, so the diameter must be 8, because 8's all the way along. Or we could also use this formula if we want to, 2 times pi times r, or 2 pi r. I prefer this one because all you have to do is find the diameter and then multiply it by pi. Okay, so what we're going to do then is let's work out the area of that circle at the top there. Remember, the area of a circle is pi r squared or pi times radius squared, however you want to remember it. So, our radius for this circle is 5. The diameter was given to us as 10, which means our radius is 5. So, we're going to do pi times by 5 squared. And personally, I like to do this bit first. So, I'm then going to do pi times, and 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. And then on my scientific calculator, I would then do pi, which you would press your pi button. Um, press your pi button and it will give you, uh, it will just put pi on a scientific calculator. You'll just see it in the corner. Okay. Um, and then you'll press times 25. And you can put, you can put um, pi times 5 times 5 if you want to because of that. Okay, it will still give you that bit. And your final answer for that would be 
6.33, da, da, da. So we can say it's 78.5 centimeters squared because it's area to three significant figures. Okay, done. We'll have some more practice at that in a second. So pi r squared. For the circumference, so if we look at this second question, the circumference of this circle here, circumference is pi times diameter or pi d. Okay, pi d. Pi times diameter. Well, if the radius of this shape was 4, this circle, then the diameter must have been 8. So we're just going to do pi times 8. Okay, that's nice and easy, isn't it? Pi times 8. So put pi on your calculator. I think pi on your calculator, sorry, I should have mentioned, is um, there's a little button at the bottom and it says uh, times 10 to the power of x or something like that. And I think if you press shift and then you press this, it gives you pi, okay? So, sorry, that's something I forgot to mention. Pi is not necessarily on its own as a button. You have to press shift and then you press this button times 10 to the power of x. That's at the bottom of your calculator and it gives you pi. You can then press times 25 or times 8, depending on the question. So pi times 8 gives us 25.1327412. And we can see that's 25.1 centimeters because it's only perimeter this time so we don't have centimeters squared to three significant figures okay so just remember area is pi r squared and circumference is pi times diameter right then why don't you have a go at answering this question calculate the perimeter and area of this shape give your answer correct to three significant figures so pause the video and have a go and then press play for the answer Okay, if you've had a go, the first thing I'm going to work out is the area. To me, that'll be easier. Now, what you've got to remember here is you've got a semicircle, okay, and you've got a rectangle. Your rectangle is length times width, which means we'd just do 12 times 5, okay? 12 times 5 is 60, so the area of the rectangle would be 60 centimetres squared. Okay, so rectangle equals 60 centimetres squared. We then need to do the circle, the semicircle. So to find the area of a circle, we do pi r squared, don't we? So that means we're going to do pi times, well, the radius of this circle, I know it's not a full circle, but let's pretend it is for a minute, okay? The radius of this circle, not very good drawing there, Sadie. Okay, the radius of this circle is going to be six centimeters. Because if we look down here, this is technically the same as this. That means the diameter would be 12. Okay, so that means the radius is six. So that's pi times six squared. Okay, Six squared is 36, so we're going to do pi times 36, okay? Pi times 36 is 113.09733, okay? And that's centimetres squared. I'm going to round it to 113.1 centimetres squared to three significant figures. Now, actually, I'm lying to you because before I do that, that actually gives me the whole circle, doesn't it? That gives me the area of the full circle. Well, actually, I don't have a full circle. I only have half a circle. So I just need to quickly divide that by 2. Okay, if I divide that by 2, it gives me 56.548667, blah, blah, blah. And I can round that to 56.5 centimetres squared to three significant figures. Okay? That's just for my semicircle. So now the final thing I need to do to work out the area of the whole thing 
is add the 60 and the 56.5 together. So if I write that at the top here, final area equals 60 plus 56.5. Okay. Um, now, it's up to you if you wanted to, was it 60? Yeah, 0.5. Um, if you wanted to round now or you wanted to round after you did that, it shouldn't really matter. That gives me 116.5 centimetres squared. Okay. So that's my final answer for my area. Now I need to work out the perimeter. Okay. So the perimeter. The perimeter of my shape, again, we need to just show that we've got this semicircle. Okay. And what I could do is I could work out the perimeter of these three sides first because I want to know all the way down there, all the way around there, and all the way up to there. And then I'll figure out the circle in a minute. So first of all, I'll do 5 plus 5 plus 12, okay? So that gives me 22 centimetres. Then, to work out the circumference of the circle, remember, it's pi times d, pi times diameter. Well, that's pi times 12 then, because the diameter of this circle, if it was full, okay, would be 12, because it's the same here, okay? So I'm going to do pi times 12, and that gives me 37.6991184, and so on. Now, don't forget, I need to divide that by 2 because that still gives me the perimeter of an entire circle and I only need the half. So, if I half that, it gives me 18.8495592. Okay. So, what that's done is given me the outside edge. I'm sorry, I haven't drawn that very well, have I? But it gives me the outside edge, okay? So, the last thing I need to do is add together the 22 and the 18.8. Uh, 18.84 okay and if I did that again I'll do that in green here final perimeter okay equals 22 plus 18.849 dot, 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 dot giving me 40.84955 so if I round that I'm going to give myself 40.8 centimeters to three significant figures. All right. So that's how you work out the area and perimeter of a compound shape like that. All right. Area, we work out the bottom bit first, then the, the semicircle, and we added them together. Perimeter, we worked out all the way around, and then the outside edge. Okay. Now, I just want to point out that if I'm going to, I'm just going to rub this out so I can use it as a bit of space. If I had a shape that was just a semicircle, okay, and I had to work out the area, I would do pi r squared and then I would just divide it by two because it's half a circle. If it was for the perimeter, I would do pi times d and divide it by two like I did on this side. But because it's a semicircle on its own, when I do pi times d and divide by 2, it only gives me this length. But when it wants the perimeter of a semicircle, it also wants you to add on this length. So if it wasn't a shape like this, okay, on the left, it, it was a semicircle on its own, you would have to do pi times d, but then you'd have to add this length. Because the perimeter is all the way around the shape. Okay. Hopefully you understand that. All right, then. Why don't you pause the video and have a go at this question? A circle has an area of 60 centimetres squared. Calculate the radius of the circle correct to three significant figures. Use pi equals 3.142. Okay, if you've had a go, let's draw a diagram. Circle has an area of 60 centimetres squared. Okay, um, and we want to know the radius, so we want to know that length there. 
we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared or pi times radius squared okay we know the area is 60 centimeters squared we know that pi is 3.142 and it tells us just to use that value as well and then we have to square it uh, times by radius squared sorry okay so we've got 60 centimeters equals 3.142 times by the radius squared so all i've done is put my values in that i know i don't know the radius yet and I'm, i've been i'm now got an equation i've now got an equation okay and i want to find out r r is being multiplied well it's being squared but it's also being multiplied by 3.142 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide by 3.142 okay on both sides if i do that that and that gives me 60 divided by 3.142 leaving me with 19.096117 I'm going to write that this whole number because I feel like it would be beneficial. Okay. And that means that R squared is 19.096, blah, blah, blah. So the last thing I need to do to get R is to square root this number because if I square root it or if I square root both sides, it leaves me with R on its own and that 2 disappears. Okay. So if I square root that now in my calculator, it gives me 4.36991042503753, which is R. It then wants us to know what it is to three significant figures. So that would be 4.37 centimetres to three significant figures. Okay, I can actually put R equals rather than equals R. All right, and that is our answer, 4.37. Okay, so we're working backwards from our formula. Now, if you wanted to check that and do pi R squared, we can do 3.142 times by 4.37. Now, we have rounded, so it's not going to give us um, a fantastic um answer because we've rounded but it will be close enough to 60 because that's the area so if this gives us around about 60 then we know we've done it right so we're going to do 3.142 because that's what we've used in the question we won't use the pi button and we're going to times it by um 4.37 squared okay and if i do that it actually gives me 60.0024598 well to me that's close enough so I know that I've, made, I've I've got it right. Okay. All right. So what about this one then? I know I'm doing a lot with circles at the minute. It's just that you need the practice. So this is the last one. And then we're going to move on to looking at arc and arc area and length. The diagram shows the plan of the inside of a running track. The grounds person is going to cover this area with grass seed. One sack of gra grass seed covers 275 metres squared. How many sacks of grass seed does the grounds person need? Okay, so pause the video and have a go at this one and then press play for the answer. All right, if you've had a go. Now, what we need to remember here is that we've actually got, not only have we got, like, we know that that's 60 there. This is also a semicircle here. So in theory, we've got one whole circle if we put them together. So I can actually draw a circle and it has a diameter of 60 meters. And then I've got a rectangle with a length of 110 meters by 60 meters. Okay, so that's my middle section here. Okay, so to be fair, I could have drawn the rectangle in green to give us a bit of difference. Make sure that you know which ones we're looking at. Okay, so we've got these two shapes first of all let's do the rectangle because that'll be easy 
So to find the area of a rectangle, we just do length times width, which equals 60 times 110. And that gives us 6,600 meters squared. Okay, so we've done that bit. We then need to work out the area of the circle. Okay, so remember, when they give us something like this, we know we need to work out the area of the shape. So that's what I'm doing first. So the area of the circle, because we've got one whole circle in total, because we've got two semicircles, we can just use our formula nice and easy. Area equals pi times radius squared. Our radius is not 60, it's 30, because radius is half the diameter, and our diameter is 60. So that's pi times 30 squared. So you could just put in pi and then times by 30 times by 30 on your calculator. Or you can put in pi and then press times by 30 and then do the little squared button. All right. Obviously, 30 times 30 is what 30 squared means. 3 times 3 is 9 and then you've got two zeros. So you could do pi times 900 on your calculator instead, okay? And if I did that, if I did pi r squared, okay, that gives me the area equals 2,827 point, and then it's 433333, so I'm just going to leave it as 43, all right, um, meters squared to two decimal places, okay? Now then, I've worked out the area of the circle and I've worked out the area of the rectangle. What I need to do now is find the area of everything in total. So I need to add 6,600 and 2,827.43 together, okay? And if I do that, it gives me, rather than doing it longhand, 9,427.43 metres squared to two decimal places. So I've worked out the area. And it says that one sack of grass seed covers 275 metres squared. Well, I've got 9,427.43 metres squared. So to work out how many sacks of grass seed I need, I'm going to have to do 9,427.43 divided by 275. Okay, so divided by 275 gives me 34.28, okay, sacks. <laughs> and that's to two decimal places. And I can't buy 34.28 sacks. So I'm going to buy 35 sacks of grass seed. And that's it. You're done. That's your answer. Hopefully in your exam, you'll write it in a bit of a better format than me. I've kind of gone all over the page. But uh, area in, uh, do your area first and then work out how many sacks you need. And make sure you put it all nice and neatly, one after the other. Okay. Okay, so I hope you feel confident calculating perimeters and areas of 2D shapes, including triangles and circles for level 2, as well as composite shapes, including non-rectangular shapes. Alright, I look forward to seeing how you do on the assignment. I'll see you in the next video.